Lesson 20, Sorting with Bubble Sort. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in Lesson 1. In this lesson, we present a C++ implementation of the bubble sort. The bubble sort algorithm was covered in the general algorithms Lesson 1, so you may want to watch that video at this point if you are not familiar with the algorithm. This video brings together the material of the preceding C++ console lessons. The project and code are available for download at zoex.net for anyone who wants them. Looking past the header information, we have three function templates in our main function. The first function template is the swap that we saw in lesson 19. It swaps the values of two variables and the arguments are passed in by reference. This means that changes to these arguments inside affect the passed in variables. Passing arguments by reference was covered in lesson 18. The subject of references was covered in lesson 17. The next function template, printArray, is similar to the one in lesson 19 with the same name. It prints out the values of an array's entries. In the first line, we make use of the using directive to allow us to refer to cout and nline without needing std and the scope resolution operator. The using directive and namespaces were covered in lesson 15. The second line of the function makes use of a for loop to index the array. For loops were covered in lesson 16. Recall that the third part of the for statement we called the update portion. This increment of the index is executed at the end of each loop. We covered incrementing and decrementing in lesson 14. The third function template is the bubble sort, which makes use of the swap. We covered the bubble sort algorithm in the general algorithms video, lesson 1. Notice the similarity of this function to our pseudocode from that lesson. Finally, we look at our main function. Since our bubble sort is a function template, it is available for all data types. To demonstrate this, we first call the bubble sort on an array of doubles, and then on an array of chars. We print these arrays before and after sorting. Note that we use the print array function on the double array, but not on the char array. This is because Cout knows how to print out arrays of chars, but not doubles. Executing the program, we get the unsorted and sorted arrays respectively. Notice that zoax.net has been sorted alphabetically, but that the period has been moved to the front. This is because the period comes before the letter characters in the ASCII table, which includes non-alphanumeric characters. We just mentioned this here, but we will explain it later in detail. This concludes the lesson.